Our Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for giving me life, Lord. This is uh, very hour that uh, I may be able to speak to your children. And Lord, they may be virtual. It may be they are traveling to one place or another and listening to this. I pray that you may be with them. Your angels may be with your people. This preparation, Lord, help us to prepare our hearts. Thank you for the manifold uh, blessings that you've given to us. And thank you for the gifts of thy Holy Spirit that uh, enables us to walk in righteousness and to do thy work. And so I pray that you may take over every uh, equipment and uh, uh, you may, Lord, speak to us that uh, the agencies of heaven employed to give us clarity of thoughts. May Lord work on our hearts and on our minds that the fruits of our lips and the meditations of our hearts may be acceptable before thee. And uh, this is a sensitive uh, uh, presentation. I pray that uh, we may not get uh, emotional, but uh, we may listen to truth and may, we may be liberated from falsehood. Your name be glorified now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, Amen. I want to thank uh, our Heavenly Father so far that uh, we have been able to cover Revelation chapter 14, the three angels' messages, and uh, we are now in the last three presentations. Uh, we have looked at why the three angels' messages, we have looked at uh, the everlasting gospel, we have looked at uh, the aspect of fearing God, the aspect of worshipping Him, and uh, Babylon is fallen, and then Revelation chapter 18, fallen again, we have looked at if any man worships the beast, and we have a presentation by Brother Zadok, which talks about the third angel's message in a very detailed way, uh, which uh, appears as uh, our number eight. And I have split this uh, presentation into two. It was to be one presentation, uh, talking about the uh, image and the mark of the beast and the seal of God and I have split split them into two and we have number 9a which will we are going to look at uh, the beast his image and the mark and then later on in the uh, other presentation 9b we shall be looking at the seal of God and then <clears throat> we summarize with uh, the three uh, summarizing the three angels messages and so uh, I want you to take your time to listen or watch what we are speaking about and do not hurry into uh, conclusions but um, listen to what the word of the Lord speaks to us because we have to go beyond the simplicity of uh, these messages and get to the surface to the root matter of what we are speaking about when we talk about the beast his image and uh, the mark and so in Revelation chapter 13, we found out a beast rising out of the sea. And uh, this beast was given power by the pagan Rome. Uh, it is a world religious power. Uh, it claims equality with God. It's a persecuting power. It reigns for 12, uh, it reigned for 1260 years. That is the dark ages between 538 to 1798. And uh, we are told the number of his name adds up to the number 666. The beast of Revelation 13 and 14 can only be the Roman Catholic Church, the system of the papacy. We can cover that in Daniel chapter 7, Daniel chapter 8, and then Revelation chapter 13. And so you can look at the previous presentations and uh, see uh, for yourself the evidence uh, uh, that are presented in Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, we find that, And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as will not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both, uh, he causeth uh, uh, all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and born to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. When you read Revelation chapter 13, we find that um, there is another beast 
rising out of uh, the earth there is uh, another beast rising out of the earth that is uh, revelation chapter 13 verses uh, verses uh, revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 11 to uh, 15 we have another beast rising uh, from the earth and uh, I'd like just to share this so that uh, we, we may know what we are talking about this is uh, what we read in Revelation chapter 13 verses verses 11 this indeed is uh, profound revelation chapter 13 verses 11 we read that um, and I beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon and he exercised all the power of the first beast before him and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to dwell to to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed and he doeth great wonder, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, uh, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which he had the wound by a sword, and uh, did uh, what did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be uh, killed. That is the second beast of uh, uh, Revelation chapter 13. We have the first beast coming out of the sea, which we have identified as the papal uh, a stage of the Roman Empire. But now in, uh, we have from verse 11, another beast rising out of the sea <clears throat> which gives life uh, to the image of the beast now after the dark ages uh, ending in 1798 the papal power received a wound and this wound was um, the taking away of the civil powers it held the civil power and the religious powers and the civil power were taken away but we find that in Revelation chapter 13, a beast starts, and in 11, another beast rises out of the earth, and he starts out as a lamb, a harmless beast. But as it continues to grow uh, and to expand its territories, it starts to speak like, um, uh, 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 the, like the, the first beast. And then it gives back the life to the image of the beast that civil power that was taken away it's given back to the roman uh, uh power again to persecute the the children of god and so uh this is the giving back of the life of the beast and so when we look at what is an image an image is an iconic mental uh representation a visual representation the general impression that something a uh, person or organization or, or a product presents to the public or someone who closely resembles a famous person so it is something that uh, seemeth as exactly as the other so what is this image to the beast that we are talking about we are told the purpose is not merely a church but a combination of church and state and we see that when it was wounded in 1798 this civil power was taken away and when it is regained then the image to the beast is formed again and then he she has the power to persecute this is the very essence of the papal system the church used the arm of state to enforce its dogmas often resulting in the punishing and martyrdom of so-called heretics according to the amazing prophecy america will take the lead in creating an image of or replica of the papal system in the time before the end of the world the image to the beast can be likened to a person looking in a mirror and seeing his reflected image. It is not him in reality, but it's his exact image. So there we see a reflection of the purpose 
in a posted Protestantism. There will be a repudiation of everything Protestantism overstood for in the promotion of religious liberty. The state will be employed to enforce religious laws and the rights of individual concerns will be sacrificed on the altar of uh, conformity. And so in Revelation chapter 13 verses 16 and 17, he causes all both uh, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on their uh, right hand or on their forehead and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark of the or the name of the beast or the number of his name now talking about not buying or selling uh, uh, the, the purpose itself uh, boasts like this we are told from inspiration uh, this is how the purpose boasts in uh, in the beautiful book uh, prophet and kings page 184 paragraph 2 This is uh, what we read. Thus the world will become mine. I'll be the ruler of the earth, the prince of the world. I'll so control the minds under my power that God's Sabbath shall be a special object of contempt. A sign, I'll make the observant of the seventh day a sign of disloyalty to the authorities of earth. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare to observe the seventh day Sabbath. For fear of wanting food and clothing, no buying and selling, they will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. That is how she boasts. And so America, which started, uh, which was established on the principles of Protestantism, uh, that is a uh, Republican and um, uh, democracy, that is the Republican and democracy, where actually Protestantism religious liberty was given to the people they could worship uh, uh, without a dictate of their conscience they would worship god freely these um, principles that made america will be repudiated and then uh, the world will be uh, plunged in a crisis that has never been according to daniel chapter 12 verses one and so we are headed to these uh, days that we are talking about brothers and sisters this is not a caricature this is real things that are going to happen we are told if any worship the beast revelation the four and 24 elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying that what O lord to receive glory and honor and power so the only person that has to be worshipped is the person that made the heavens and the earth and created everything in them that is why the first angel's message calls us to worship him who made the heavens and the earth and not anyone else because people are, are worshiping creatures rather than worshiping god they are worshiping their wealth they are worshiping their children they are worshiping their education people are worshiping created things rather than the creator and so uh uh, this kind of worship and I saw one of the heads as it were wounded the civil powers were taken away but again they will be given back and uh, the people worshipped the dragon which gave a uh, power unto the beast and they worshipped the beast saying who is like unto the beast who is able to make war with him and so anyone who worships under this false system actually uh, uh, he is worshipping the dragon himself Satan himself the devil gave the power to the full system of pagan rome and then pagan rome gave its authority and seat to the papal rome so whoever worships the beast whoever uh, 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 does it uh, its bidding then it is doing the biddings of the devil himself when christ was presented by the devil the uh, things of this world and uh, told by the devil to fall down and worship him in matthew chapter 4 verses 8 uh, to 10 we read that uh, uh, then jesus said unto him get thee hand satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve but um, when uh, things are represented to us in this world uh, that we may uh, be allured by them and forsake the principle we are so apt to uh, take such offers 
which are so temporary while not uh, uh, remembering that these things are going to come to an end and whoever uh, have chosen them over the worship of the one true God, he will uh, be lost and not be saved. And so, and that no man might bar or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Uh, recently, we have seen things that are, are happening in this world. They are uh, not uh, simple things. You have seen um, people have been barred from traveling. People have been barred from receiving services. Uh, and why? Because uh, just of the COVID situation that has been before us, people that have seen themselves not uh, get the certificates uh, and uh, get vaccinations have, have been having a problem traveling and accessing uh, the government uh, help. And we find that uh, although this will not be limited only in using these cards and all this stuff, but you can sense what is coming to happen and we are told that more information is to be revealed concerning this buy, uh, buy or sell issue. In uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 17, paragraph 2, there is to be no change in the general features of our work. It is to stand as clear and distinct as prophecy has made it. We are to enter into no confederacy with the world, supposing that by so doing we could accomplish more. If any stand in the way to hinder the advancement of the work in the lines that God has appointed, they will displace God. No line of truth that has made the seventh day people what they are is to be weakened. We have the all landmarks of truth, experience, and duty, and we are to stand firmly in defense of our principles in full view of the world. And so, even though uh, we, we, we may be presented with a situation that forces us to deny our principles, let us... Uh, uh, let, let us approach the Lord in prayer to be guided by him rather than choosing the principles that will be against his word. Let us uh, uh, rather die than ac accept things that uh, the Lord will displease the Lord and their sin. I'm talking about the things that will make us sin. There are places where we have to do things and the Lord will protect us. He says that um, and uh, uh, I was conversing with a, a friend of mine on the issues that are happening in this world and it is not because of uh, the opinion he had but uh, he's pointing me back to the scriptures that uh, 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 caught my mind and uh, I, I was asking him, uh, brother now how, what can we do about all uh, uh, this uh, things that are happening what can we do about these things that are are happening and he pointed me to the book of uh, mark mark chapter 16 where i want you to to also see what the lord says mark chapter 16 from verses 15. This is profound. Mark chapter 16, verses 15. I want you to see this clearly. We are talking about being brought in a situation where we may be uh, forced to compromise the will, uh, uh, the, the whole perfect will of the Lord. I'm not talking about excusing sin but uh, doing things which are against us but are not seen. There, there, there are places where actually maybe uh, like uh, you, are, you are caught up uh, in a situation where you have to pay a fine that uh, you are not supposed to pay. Such a situation, you have just to pay the, the fine. We are told that uh, this is robbery that they are doing we shall have to pay them or you are you are taken into prison and you have to eat a food that uh, <clears throat> is against uh, your will and uh, this doesn't make you a sinner per se 
But uh, I want you to look at this. And he said unto them, Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow thee them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devil, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them, they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Verse 18 is so profound to me, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, you can be brought in a place where you are vaccinated against your will, there is no way of getting out of this thing. Your child is taken from you and vaccinated against your will. And you also, you are caught up in a place, in a country, and you have to leave that country. Maybe the laws have been made when you are in that country and you have to come out or in a certain, certain district. And there is no way of getting out. You have to get these things. And they are done against thy will and there is no other way. You have to reach to your family. What shall you do when there is no other way? Then the, the Lord says clearly, uh, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. The Lord will protect us because we are not taking this willingly to defile our bodies, but we have been forced and we are in situations where we cannot escape. And so uh, we have seen things happen uh, which are, are against the will of the, the Lord, but the Lord is going to be with us. And we are told that uh, many more light has to be revealed on this issue of uh, uh, no buying and selling. And going back to Testimonies, uh, Volume 6, uh, page 17, uh, paragraph 1, I will also want you to see where she says that uh, more light has to be revealed on this issue of no buying and selling. The light we have received upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it is, Sunday sacredness and the immortality of the soul and all that stuff. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood, nor will it be understood until the roll and rolling of the scroll, but a more solemn work is to be accomplished in our world. The Lord's command to his servants is cry aloud and spare, not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. And so you find that all the light uh, uh, on this matter has not yet been revealed and it will re be revealed as the scroll is unrolled and we are seeing the scroll being unrolled uh, and the unrolling of the scroll is the revealing of the truth which has been hidden uh, to us and so we are seeing the Lord reveal more information that we than we have ever had on this issue and uh, so to receive a mark what is a uh, a mark is a distinguishing symbol, the impression created by doing something unusual or extraordinary that people notice and remember. And so, it says that uh, anyone who receives the mark on their forehead or in his hand, what does it mean to receive the mark on their hand uh, or on their forehead? Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, Ecclesiastes 9.10, do it with thy might, for there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. So receiving the mark in thy hand is what you do. And receiving uh, the, the mark on the forehead, Exodus chapter 28, verse 38, it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the iniquity of the holy things which the children of Israel shall hallow in all their gifts, and it shall be always upon his forehead that they may be accepted. And thou shalt shew my son, Assure thy son in that day, saying, This is done because that which the Lord did unto me when I came out of Egypt, and it shall be a sign before a sign unto thee upon thy hand, and for a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth, for with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. So receiving the mark on the hand according to Ecclesiastes is what you do, and receiving the mark on the forehead is what you receive in the mind. And so, while the 144 are standing with the lamp on Mount Zion, having the Father's name in their forehead, which means, according to Exodus chapter 9, 13, verse 9, his law written in their minds, um, the people who receive the mark of the beast are having the law of the devil or Satan in their forehead. It means that the 144 are doing the biddings of the Lord and those who receive the mark of the beast are doing the biddings of the enemy. 
of the Ten Commandments it's written, and these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine head, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. So the law of God has to be in our mind, and it has to, to accentuate and um, be lead out in what we do, guide us in what we do. And so it shall be in our, between our eyes. And it means that the law of God shall be our guide. Psalms 119 verses uh, uh, 9 says that wherein shall a young man keep his ways pure? It is by heeding to the word of the law. Verse 11, uh, uh, thy word have I, I kept in mine heart that I may not sin against thee. So the, the word of the Lord has to guide us. It has to be our frontlets. It has to be between our eyes so that we may be able to meditate upon what we are doing. We may be able to make um, an informed decision in what we are doing. Without the law of God written in our hearts, what we'll do will be our own things. It will be uh, what the enemy will want us to do. In Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 4, we are told that, And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the foreheads of men that sigh and that cry for all the abomination that be done in the midst thereof. And so, those who are marked in their forehead, those who receive the seal of God in their foreheads, are crying uh, against the abominations that are happening in this world. Those who receive the mark of the beast, contrary then it will be in the opposite they are not crying for the abominations that are happening in the world and so the mark of the beast will be placed in either the hand or the forehead forehead meaning convincing it is right and hand has to go along with it what does the roman catholic church claim is the sign of his authority what is his mark their mark of authority catholic record september 1 1923 sunday is our mark of authority the church is above the bible and this transference of sabbath observant is a proof of that fact again of course the catholic church claims that the change was her act and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power and authority in religious matters later october 28 1895 from cf thomas a word from a catholic record catholic record september 17 1893 sunday is founded not of scripture but on tradition and is distinctly a catholic institution as there is no scripture for the transfer of the day of rest from the last to the first day of the week protest pro, pro, protestants ought to keep their sabbath on saturday and thus leave catholics in full possession of uh, sunday a word of advice from the papacy saint catherine Ch church sentinel Algonac, Michigan, May 21, 1995. Perhaps the boldest thing and the most revolutionary change the Roman Catholic Church ever did happened in the first century. The holy day, the Sabbath, was changed from Saturday to Sunday. The day of the Lord was chosen not from any direction noted in the scriptures, but from the Catholic Church sense of its own power. People who think that the scripture should be the sole authority should logically become Seventh-day Adventist and keep Saturday holy. In fact, the Pope tells you what you ought to do. Because she's telling you, these are the things I have done. But if you want to obey God, do the other way as he says. But if you want to obey me, do what I'm telling you. Sunday, a word from Roman Catholic priest, priest Brady in an address <coughs> reported in the Elizabeth New Jersey News, March 18, 1903. It is well to remind the Presbyterians, Baptists, Methodists, and all other Christians that the Bible does not support them anywhere in their observance of Sunday. Sunday is an, an institution of the Roman Catholic Church, and those who observe the day observe a commandment of the Catholic Church. Sabbath, a Hebrew word signifying rest, Sunday was the name given by the heathens to the first day of the week because it was the day of which they worshipped the sun. John E.D.D.D. 
uh, a Bible encyclopedia, page 561. We are, we are coming to this statement that this was a day dedicated to the worship of the sun. Hold on there. The Convert Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, 1957, page 50. Which is the Sabbath day? Saturday is the Sabbath day. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Catholic World, March 1894, page 809. She took the pagan Sunday and made it the Christian Sunday. And thus the pagan Sunday dedicated to Balda, Baal, became the sacred Sunday, sacred to Jesus. Faith of her fathers, Cardinal Gibbons. Of course, the Catholic Church claims that the change was her act, and the act is a mark of her ecclesiastical power. Father Inwright, uh, American Sentinel, June 1893, says, The Bible says, Remember that thou keep the holy the sabbath day the catholic church says the catholic church says no by my divine power i abolish the sabbath day and command you to keep holy the first day of the week and lord the entire civilized world bows down in reverent obedience to the command of the holy catholic church and so catechism of romans uh, romanas 1867 chapter 3 pope Pius 1566 commanded by Council of Trent, it pleased the Church of God that the religious celebration of the Sabbath day should be transferred to the Lord's Day. Sunday Prayer, Sydney, August 25, 1900. Sunday is a Catholic institution and its claims to observance can be defended only on Catholic principles. From the beginning to the end of Scripture, there is not a single passage which warrants the transfer of weekly public worship from the last day of the week to the first. The Catholic Mirror, September 23, 1893. The Christian Sabbath is therefore, to this day, the acknowledged offspring of the Catholic Church as spouse of the Holy Ghost. So, Sunday is a Christian Sabbath espoused to the Holy Ghost. Now they, are, now, they are starting to broaden their mark and what it means. Their mark is Sunday sacredness. Now they are saying this Sunday sacredness, it's a spouse of the Holy Ghost. Albert Smith, Chancellor of the Archdiocese of Baltimore, if Protestants will follow the Bible, they should worship God on the Sabbath day. In keeping the Sunday, they are following a law of the Catholic Church. Uh, S.E. Mosna, Storia de la Mon de Monica, uh, 1969, pages 366 to 367. Not the creator of the universe in Genesis 2, 1 to 3, but the Catholic Church can claim the honor of having granted man a pause in his work every seven days. So God says that you shall rest in this day, but uh, another power says that you shall rest in this day. So there is a competition going here. Who is going to have the supremacy? Remember, Satan gave the power to pagan Rome, and pagan Rome gave authority and seat to the papal Rome. So it is not... A question per se of the churches but it is a war between Satan and his angels and Christ and his angels the Catholic mirror December 23 1893 reason and common sense demand the acceptance of one or the other of these alternatives either Protestantism and the keeping of holy of Saturday or Catholicity and the keeping holy of Sunday compromise is impossible and I say amen compromise is impossible so we cannot tolerate any keep of any other day but the Holy Sunday, the main day of the resurrection of the eternal God. In virtue of this, we are obligated to fulfill the demands of the divine oracles enforced by the Roman Apostolic Catholic Church, which decides the destiny of mankind. Now, this is this is blasphemy. Uh, I'll point out, they say that uh, the Catholic, the, the Sunday observance is a spouse to the Holy Ghost. Now they add, that the keeping of Sunday is in commemoration of the eternal God, resurrection of eternal God. Now they are referring to Jesus Christ. There is so much to talk about this issue of the eternal God. This is the second thing. And the third thing, this was given by the church because it is the one that decides the destiny of mankind. You see, this power is competing against God. It is not for God. 
It is not a church which decides the destiny of mankind. It is God himself which decides the destiny of the commandment. That is why when we were looking at um, if any man worship the beast and the, the sanctuary attack, the purpose leaped even unto the seat of God. You can watch and go and watch if any man worships the beast. So what is all this Sunday laws? Sunday laws and the Trinity. You have seen it is an espouse to the Holy Ghost. It is a, a celebration to the resurrection of uh, the, the, the eternal God. And then it is because the church is the one which decides the destiny of mankind. But at John is speaking, says the laws of the state of Maryland not in the, the laws of the state of Maryland not inconsistent with this title as the same existed on the 27th day of February 1801 except as since modified or repealed by Congress or by authority therefore, or until so modified or repealed, continue in force within the district. So Sunday laws are tied with the Trinity doctrine. The law of Maryland, October 1723, relative to Sunday was then as follows. To punish blasphemers, swearers, drunkards, and Sabbath breakers. And for repealing the laws here to fall, made for the punishment such a uh, offenders. He continues, be it enacted by the right honorable the Lord proprietor by and with the advice and consent of his lordship's governor and the up and lower houses of assembly and the authority of the same that if any person shall hear after within this province that is Maryland wittingly maliciously and advisedly by writing or speaking blaspheme or curse God or deny our Savior Jesus Christ to be the Son of God, or shall deny the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, or the Godhead, or any of the three persons, or the unit of the Godhead, or shall utter any profane word concerning the Holy Trinity, or any of the persons thereof, and shall be thereof convicted by the verd by verdict or confession, shall for the first offend be board through the tongue and find 20 pounds sterling to the Lord proprietor to be applied to the use of the county where the offense shall be committed to be levied on the offender's body goods and chattels lands or uh, tenements and in case the said fine cannot be levied the offender to suffer six months imprisonment without bail or main price and that for the second offend, the offender, being thereof convict as aforesaid, shall be stigmatized by burning in the forehead the letter B, that is blasphemy, and find 40 pounds sterling to the Lord proprietor to be applied and levied as aforesaid. And in any case, the same cannot be levied. The offender shall suffer 12 months imprisonment without bail or main price. And that for the third offense, the offender being convict as aforesaid shall suffer death without the benefit of the clergy. February 13, 1890. Uh, uh, and this is uh, uh, Eti Jones uh, uh, giving this uh, story in the, in the, this is Eti Jones briefing us on the, on the issue on the laws of uh, Maryland, on the laws of uh, uh, Maryland. And so we find that uh, this issue are so tied, so close with the worship of the Trinity. We continue section two, and be it enacted that every person that here, here, Hereafter, profanely swear or curse in the presence and hearing of any magistrate, minister, the commissary general, secretary, sheriff, coroner, or provincial or count clerk, uh, vestryman, church warden, or constable, or be convicted thereof before any magistrate by the oath of one lawful witness or confession of the party shall for the first oath or curse be fined two shilling and sixpence current money, and for every oath or after the first five shilling like money to be applied to the use of said section three to nine relate to drunkards and the enforcement of the law and be it enacted that no person whatsoever shall work or do any bodily labor on the lord's day commonly called sunday and that no person having children 
servants or slaves shall command or wittingly or willingly suffer any of them to do any man of work or labor on the Lord's day, works of necessity and charity always accepted, nor shall suffer or permit any children, servants or slaves to profane the Lord's day by gaming, fishing, falling, hunting, or unlawful pastimes or recreations, and that every person transgressing this act and being thereof convicted by the oath of one sufficient witness or confession of the party before a single magistrate shall forfeit 200 pounds of tobacco to be levied and applied as a forsaid, that no housekeeper shall sell any strong liquor on Sunday except in cases of absolute necessity or suffer any dungeness, gaming or unlawful sports or recreations in his or her house on pain of forfeiting 200 two thousand pounds of tobacco to his lordship one half to the use of a forsaid and the other half to him that will sue for the same to be recovered by action of debt bill plaint or information wherein no essence protection or wager of law shall be uh, allowed and be enacted that every parish clerk within his province shall procure a copy of this act with the county clerks are hereby required to suffer the parish clerks to take without fee or reward for which he shall be allowed in the parish 50 pounds of tobacco and that the same shall be read four times in a year this on some sunday in march in june in september in december by every minister within this province in their respective parish churches between divine service and someone on pain of forfeiting 1000 pounds of tobacco for every omission one half to the lord proprietor for the use of said, and the other half to him that will sue for the same to be recovered by action of debt bill plan or information where in no essence protection or wager of law shall be allowed laws of the district of california these statutes have never been either repealed or modified by any act of congress on the contrary provision has been made for their strict enforcement the revised statutes of the district of columbia says it shall be the duty of the board of police at all times of the day or night within the boundaries of said police district now these are the things that uh, brothers and sisters you can hear about the the mark of the beast and just wonder actually what is happening what is happening that uh, this they have the laws and their laws is to punish the people who do not believe in trinity the laws forbids any kind of work and these laws have been there and they have been sometimes practiced even reading how these laws have been practiced uh, uh, at some times let us read uh, how these laws have been practiced uh, at some time uh, ago this is interesting to know what actually is uh, it is happening uh, that uh, that has happened and will happen very soon to the people who worship God in truth and in spirit. Uh, look at this. In the past, these laws has been have been there and people have been passed. And at one time in our, our history, Bosbol became caught up in the shrill debate over proposed blue laws to outlaw athletic events on Sunday as a discretion of the Sabbath. In no state did this conflict play out more dramatically than in Arkansas in 1885. The Arkansas legislature outlawed Sunday baseball along with a host of other activities. Seventh-day Adventists who do not recognize Sunday as the Sabbath were especially unwelcome in Arkansas during the 1880s when more than 200 people were prosecuted. Moreover, the conservative forces unleashed a torrent of bills to bolster the defense of the Sabbath, outlawing golf, tennis, and fishing on Sundays, forbidding the sale of gasoline on Sundays, prohibiting men and women swimming together, and prohibiting women's bathing suits which strike above the knee. Not only that, on the second day of March 1885, the legislature of Arkansas repealed the law allowing any person to observe any Sabbath 
any day of the week that they preferred and compelled them to keep the Christian Sabbath or first day of the week. This is the mark of the beast. The effect of this change worked a hardship on a class of citizens in this county known as Seventh Day Adventists. So they are in Maryland and they are in other, in California, they are in Arkansas and they have never been repealed. The effects of this change worked a hardship on a class of citizens in the county known as Seventh Day Adventists who observed the seventh instead of the first day of the week as the Lord's Sabbath. There were five or six of them indicted and some of them the second time by the grand jury of this county for the violation of this law. In fact, these people were the only ones that were indicted for Sabbath breaking during the two years in which these laws were in force. Let me sir, illustrate the operation of the present law by one or two examples. A Mr. Swagen came from a northern state and settled on a farm in county. His farm was four, four miles from town and far away from any house of religious worship. He was a member of the Seventh-day Adventist church. And after having secretly observed the Sabbath of his people Saturday by abstaining from all secular work, he and his son, a lad of 17, on the seventh day of the week, went quietly about their usual avocations. They disturbed no one, interfered with the rights of no one, but they were observed <coughs> and reported to the grand jury, indicted, arrested, tried, convicted, fined, and having no money to pay the fine, these moral Christian citizens of Arkansas were dragged to the county jail and imprisoned like felons for 25 days. And for what? For daring in this so-called land of liberty in the year of our Lord 1887 to worship God. Alonso says, was this the end of the story? Alas, no, sir. They were turned out and the old man's only horse, his sole lands to make bread for his children, was levied on to pay the fine and cost, amounting to $38. The horse sold at auction for $27. A few days afterward, the sheriff came again and demanded $36, $11 balance due on fine and cost, and $25 for board for himself and son while in jail. So even being in jail itself for breaking the law was paid for. This is serious when it comes to Sunday laws and the mark of the beast. And when the poor old man, a Christian, mind you, told him with tears that he had no money, he promptly levied on his only cow, but was pers persuaded to accept bond. And the amount was paid by contribution from his friends on the same, of the same faith. Sir, my heart swells to bursting with indignation as I repeat to you this uh, uh, infamous uh, story. And so these are the things that um, are happening. These are the things that we are going to see that uh, they will be able to happen to the people of God. These are the things that are going to happen to the people of God. And if we think this is a joke, then uh, prepare for what is coming because it is on the way it is coming. And we shall see more of this happening uh, uh, in the United States and in the whole country. And these laws are tied to the Trinity, to the Sunday sacredness, the worship of uh, uh, the, the sun. And so talking about uh, continuing in these themes of the Sunday law, and it is dedication to the Holy Ghost and to the Trinitarian God. Uh, let us see what it says. Why Sunday and its mark? Because it is a day dedicated by the Apostle to the honor of the Most Holy Trinity. Where did we get that in the Bible? Adventist Review and Sabbath Herald, April 4, 1854. Where in the Bible does it say that the Apostles dedicated Sunday to the worship of the Most Holy Trinity? And so it is not just about keeping Sunday, it is also about whom you worship on this day. This is a mystery religion and upon our forehead was a mystery name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots and the Abominations of the Earth. What does Rome say that her central God is? What is this mystery that is the central doctrine of the war? 
the mystery of the Trinity is the central doctrine of the Catholic faith. Upon it are based all other teachings of the church. You talk about immortality of soul. You talk about Sunday sacredness. You talk about purgatory. You talk about sub, um, consubstantiation. Which you talk about limbo. You talk about confessions. And what else can we say? You talk about the Eucharist. You talk about faith and order. You talk about ecumenism. All these doctrines, all these creeds that you are talking about, they are central. The, the, the central doctrine of the Catholic faith is based on the mystery of the Trinity. So it is not just about Sunday worship and all these things that we are talking about. The, the curtain behind is the Trinity. This is the mystery, Babylon the Great, mystery of Babylon the Great. And uh, going into history a little bit, we, we are told that his law believes the religion that began at the Tower of Babel was actually the worship of Satan in the form of fire, the sun, and the serpent. However, Satan worship could not be done openly because of the many who still believed in the true God of Noah. So a mystery religion began at Babel where Satan could be worshipped in secret. Herbert Peter's recommendation, uh, a 666 page 46 and 47, Alexander Hip Slope in the two Babylon second American edition. And uh, in the Trinity, we have... Uh, in uh, Babylon, Nimrod, Tammuz, and Samiramis, and in Ezekiel chapter 8, you can see even the children of God weeping for Tammuz because they have adopted this Trinitarian doctrine. And so Ezekiel chapter 8 is a depiction of uh, the uh, those who proclaim to be Sabbath keepers, yet they are uh, weeping for Tammuz, another foreign god in, in the issue of the heavenly trio. You can read Ezekiel chapter 8 and you see it clearly that the, the children of God had adopted these Trinitarian doctrines. And also in the end, we see that they are doing the same. In Egypt, the Trinity consisted of Osiris, Horus, and Isis. In Greece, it was Zeus, Apollo, and Athena. In India, it was Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva. And in Rome, it was Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. And Alexander Hislop says that this is sun worship. This is Saturn worship that has been embedded as a mystery religion and yet people espouse the catholic doctrines and think that uh, they, they are uh, as long as they are worshiping on friday or on sunday or uh, on saturday they are worshiping the true god sun worship three became the most universal number of deity sun worship is one of the most primitive forms of religion and early man sometimes distinguished between rising, midday, and setting sun. The Egyptians, for example, divided the sun god into three deities, Horus, rising sun, Ra or Re, midday sun, Osiris, all setting sun. Egyptian deities, New International Encyclopedia, New York Dodd, 1917, volume 7, page 529. And so this is the sun worship. This is the rising of the sun, the midday of the sun, and the setting of the sun. This is what Sunday sacredness is tied in. The worship of this mystery uh, uh, three gods. Sunday worship is not just uh, coming in church on Sunday. There are people who are so innocent about this Sunday worship that the Lord will um, at last announce to them in Revelation chapter 18, come out of her, my people, because this is about mystery religion dedicated to worshiping mystery gods. And there are people who are Seventh day Adventists and they receive the mark of the beast not because they worship on the first day of the week, but because they worship on the seventh day, but they worship the mystery god of the mystery religion. And so, this is sun worship. And this is the symbols of this sun worship. The two Babylons or the purple worship proved to be the worship of Nimrod and his wife. Now, it is so interesting to look into the Greek mythology what Nimrod and Samiramis and Tammuz were. And I'll not go into detail on that issue. But it is said that uh, Semiramis actually was the mother of Nimrod. Yet, in the forefront, it is uh, said that Semiramis was the wife of Nimrod and they got the son Tammuz. Now, 
in the Greek mythology, the legends say that uh, Semiramis was the real wife, uh, the real mother of uh, Nimrod. And uh, after Nimrod died, actually, uh, this woman went warring, halloting, and she became pregnant of Tammuz. And so, in, in this worship of the mystery religion and their Trinitarian uh, things, actually, it is the worship of halotry. It is the infection of halotry and wardom that people are getting into. The, people are innocent. People do not know these things. But we are told that we should study to show approved workmanship, rightly dividing the word of truth, so that we may not be tossed about with winds uh, uh, of doctrine. And Jesus Christ tells that woman that you worship that which you don't know, but we worship whom we know. Can it be said of the children of today they are worshiping which they do not know because they have remained ignorant of what they are doing and they receive the works of men rather than investigate for themselves? My people perish because they lack knowledge. And I'm glad that the law doesn't impute sin where truth <clears throat> has not been imparted and has not been revealed. But now that the truth is coming about what is about this mystery religion, the people must take heed. We are told that uh, the whole truth about the mark of the beast and Sunday sacredness is not known, but it will be known when the scroll is unrolled. And we are in this time where knowledge is increasing and the prophecies are coming to light what is happening. And so the scroll is being unrolled. Woe unto us if we close our eyes and ears to listen to what is truth. And so in the two Babylons, Alexander Hislop says, in the unity of that one only God of the Babylonians, there were the three persons, and to symbolize that doctrine of the Trinity, they employed as the discoveries of layered proof the equilateral triangle, just as it is well known the Romish church does at this day. The two Babylons, Alexander Hislop, chapter 2. And so the triketra, the equilateral triangles, these are the pagan symbols that uh, represents this trinity and that marks the Sunday sacredness. And whoever involves himself in this mystic religion, brothers and sisters, is not going to survive the uh, wrath of God which is poured out without uh, masses. And so they form these triangles which added unto 6-6. Six, six. These are their symbols. And on Sunday visitor, the official title of the purpose is Vicarious Phil Die or Vicar of the Son of God, representing these symbols that we are talking about. The pyramids of Egypt were built on the same. This is sun worship that we are seeing. These three faces of the sun, the, the rising, the midday, and the sunset symbols, the triketra are the symbols of these suns that they worship. So these are the things that we see all over and we wonder what they are. But we are told that they represent the Trinity, the worshipping of these gods of Babylon. They are in the garments and they are everywhere. And so in ancient Babylon, the sun was worshipped from immemorial antiquity. The Worship of Nature by James G. Brazer, Volume 1, page 529. Brothers and sisters, Sunday sacredness, which is the mark of the beast, is based on worshipping the sun and worshipping the mystery gods. Assyria, this is in Assyria, this is in India, and this is uh, in Egypt. All these signs are there. In Numbers chapter 33, verses 52, we are told, uh, when you come to the land that the Lord is going to give you, then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you and destroy all their pictures and destroy all their molten images and quiet, pluck down all their high places so these pictures and symbols should never be on our books they should never be in our houses they should not be entertained by any person who is saying he's worshiping the true god these triketras and you find them on the kjv version of the bible you wonder what these things are doing on the bible but not only they are in the churches they are everywhere that you go all these symbols in the benches in the churches 
everywhere to show that they honor this Trinitarian God and it is the worship of the sun, it is the worship of Satan. Everywhere you go on the windows. And so, question, has God anybody? This is embedded in Sunday worship. Remember, people are punished because they have refused to worship on Sunday. But when they worship on Sunday, who are they worshiping? They are worshiping the sun unknown. They are worshiping Satan unknown. It, this is a secret mystery religion. Question, has God any body? No, God has no body. He's a pure spirit. Are there more gods than one? No, there is but one God. Are there more persons than one in God? Yes, in God there are three persons. Which are they? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Are there not three gods? No, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are all but one and the same God. Catholic Catechism abridged by a retired Reverend John Dubois, Bishop of New York, page 5. This is confusion. Sunday worshipping is Babylonian worship. It is a confused religion, a confusion. Athanasian Creed, New Catechism, page 67 and 68. Now this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God in the Trinity and the Trinity in unity without either confusing the persons or dividing the substance. For the person of the Father is one, the Son is another, the Holy Spirit is another, but the Godhead of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, their glory equal, their majesty co-eternal. This is uh, uh, what we call the unity of substance, consubstantiation. This is uh, uh, one substance being divided into three. The mystery of the Holy Trinity is the central mystery of Christian faith and life. It is the mystery of God in himself. It is therefore the source of all other mysteries of faith, the light that enlightens them. It is the most fundamental and essential teaching in the hierarchy of the truth of the faith. Don't wonder about these things, but praise the Lord that the truth can come out and his children can follow the truth. And so we read the mystery of the Trinity is the central doctrine of the Catholic faith upon it are based all the other teachings of the church because it is a day dedicated by the apostle to the honor of the Holy Trinity. And so we, we were told in Numbers chapter 3 that these things should never be found on our books. The triketra, the three suns, the moon, the rising sun, the midday sun, and the sunset. These are the images that should never be seen. In Numbers 33, it was so well, but you found them in the Seventh-day Adventist books. And in this one plus one plus one is equals one. And these are the triangular things upon the Bible. And here we have them again, the Trinity by uh, Wooden Widrow, Jerry Moon, and uh, John W. Reeve. Destroy their pictures. Do not allow them. To be there, let us, let us just go back to this verse. Brothers and sisters, what does the word of God say in Numbers 33, 52? When the Lord shall bring you into truth, or in the land which you inhabit, destroy their pictures. This triketra, the three rising suns, what is it doing on the books of those who profess to know the truth. It is sun worship. It is Satan worship. What is this? Understanding God's love, his plan of salvation and Christian relationships. This is an Adventist book. It says, The oneness in nature and character of the three persons of the Godhead raises the very useful question of prayer, praise and worship. But what about direct prayer to the Holy Spirit? While we have no clear example of or direct command to pray to the Spirit in Scripture, doing so does have in principle some implicit biblical support. Now you say that there is no example or a direct text, and then you say there is implicit biblical support. This is what we are calling confusion, Babylon religion, mystery. It only seems logical that God's people can pray directly to and worship the Holy Spirit without a biblical support, without an example, without any scriptural evidence. This is a Seventh-day Adventist speaking. In Ezekiel chapter 8, you find that ancient Israel worshipped the sun. This mystery religion weeping for Tammuz, the spiritual 
Israel, which are the Seventh Day Adventists, have also been caught up with this mystery religion. Adventist belief have changed over the years then, says William G. Johnson in the Adventist Review, January 6, 1934, page 10. And it has, they have changed under the impact of present truth, which is not present truth, but confusion. Most startling, it is startling, it's confusion. The teaching regarding Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Many of the pioneers, including James White, Jane Andrews, Uriah Smith, and J. H. Wagwana, held to an Aryan or semi-Aryan view that is the Son at some point in time before the creation of our world was generated by the Father. Now they say generated. This is a false representation. It was not generated. It was begotten. So they give a partial view of what our pioneers believe. The Trinitarian understanding of God, now part of our fundamental beliefs, was not generally held by the early Adventists. Even today, not a few, but many, I can tell you, William Johnson, do not subscribe to what is the fundamental belief number two. In one selected messages, 197 to 204, the prophet says our religion will be changed. The omega will be of most startling nature. And she says that I saw the sanctuary was gone. And when the sanctuary is gone, the atonement is gone. In talking about Sunday sacredness and Trinity and worship of this mysterious religion, when you look at uh, our new Adventist hymnal, we are talking about the mark of the beast. This is not an issue of just going on church on Sunday, but it is adopting these uh, uh, doctrines of devils and adopting these ideas of the fallen churches that constitute the mark of the beast and the image of the beast. I tell you, it is not just about Sunday keeping. It's not just about Sabbath keeping. It is more than that. That is what has been uh, revealed in Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 17, paragraph 1. New Adventist hymnal. The hymns below, talking about the compilation of the Adventist hymnals, the hymns below have all had been added or had their wording changed to teach Catholic doctrines. Was this accidental? No. How do we know? The new SDA hymnal tells us. The committee was so, has sought hymns well suited for congregational singing and examined each one for scriptural and doctrinal soundness. So this is not something they are gazing about that is an accident. They are saying that we have examined scriptures and the hymns we are giving unto you, they are okay with the scriptures. They sought hymns that are found the distinctive beliefs of Seventh-day Adventists as well as those that express points of faith we hold in common with other Christian bodies. Hymnals all the new provided text and tunes for, of enduring value from other churches. Sometimes it was necessary to alter the text of these hymns to eliminate theological aberrations or awkward jarring expression. With great caution, the text committee replaced archaic and exclusive language whenever this could be done without disturbing familiar phrases, straining fond attachments or doing violence to historical appropriateness. SD hymnal, page 6 and 7. So let us look at uh, these hymns then. Hymn number 142, Angels We Have Heard On High. In these hymns, verse 4 uplifts the Catholic notion that the dead are, heaven, are heavenly saints who can assist us. And so in the stanza we read, Mary, Joseph, lend your aid while we raise our hearts in love. This is immortality of soul, which is part of Sunday sacredness. This verse has no place in true Seventh-day Adventist hymnal. In fact, this song was never found in earlier SDA hymnals. Check it. We should not be invoking the aid of Mary and Joseph. The people were dead a long time ago. Hymn number 403. Let us break bread together. In this hymn, object sun worship is promoted. It is probably the best known of the aberrant hymns. When I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun, O oh Lord, have mercy on me. What have Adventists have to do with worshipping the sun? Ezekiel chapter 8, ancient as it were in the old, so it is in the new. Ancient Israel fell into sun worship. Seventh-day Adventists can sing hymns to the sun. This comes straight out of Babylonian paganism. Such a sun worship was condemned by God in the days of the prophet Ezekiel. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. 
and they worship the sun toward the east. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abomination which they commit here? Now, this sin was so much abhorrent to God because it was being done by the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. And Judah was the remnant of Israel. Seventh-day Adventists are being quarried from the other churches. And even though we have over 500 denominations worshiping on Sabbath, it is only the Seventh-day Adventist church that has been given oracles as Judah were given to preserve it and give it and feed it to the world. But for they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And Lord, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore I will also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Ezekiel 8, 16 and 18. With the above him you could use call to worship number 864. This call to worship is based on Psalm 118, 24 to 26. But instead of reading, this is the day which the Lord hath made, we will rejoice and be glad in it, as it does in KJV. The SDA hymnal committee chose to use the good news Bible, which says, this is the day of the Lord's victory. Let us be happy. Let us celebrate. Celebrate what? These words point the minds of many worshippers to Sunday and the day that Christ arose from the grave. And talking about these celebrations, Go back to Vatican II in the presentation. Uh, if many, if any man worship the beast, you will find uh, I give the history of Vatican II and the introduction of victory, happiness, and celebrations in the church. This was the, the Lord has to be worshipped, not in a mournful way, but not in these exaggerations that we are being introduced to by changing the hymns of the. The, the, the seventh day Adventist. In hymn number 471, grant us your peace. All the verses of this hymn are virtually identical to the hymn sheet handed out in the Vatican Square when the Pope lectures the assembled crowd. The four verses are identical in four languages Latin, English, French, and Spanish. The English states, Father, grant us, grant us your peace. O loving Father, grant us your peace. Grant us. Uh, grant us peace. Grant us, grant us, grant us your peace. Grant us, grant us peace. Loving Father, grant us your peace. In four different languages, thousands of faithful Catholics with their eyes fixed on their Holy Father standing in the distant window, intone their worshipful prayer to him. Consider the Latin version of what they tell him as it is written in our new SDA hymnal. Dona nobis pasim. Pasim, dona nobis pasim. This same Latin phrase as in a Catholic Mass. Did not Jesus say not to use vain repetitions in Matthew 6, 7 then? Seventh day Adventists are to sing all four stanzas. Latin is the official language in only one country of the world, the Roman Catholic Church, aka okay, the Vatican. Why are SDA given a standard in Latin to sing and all they are repeated as if uh, th there is no other thing to do? H how can you just stand there? And just be their father, grant us, grant us your peace. And continue to repeat this and this as if this is not honoring the, the name of the father at all. You, you don't stand before the father and do vain repetitions. We are talking about the mark, the beast, his mark and his image and what all Sunday sacredness constitute. We have seen that it is a day dedicated to the sun worship. It is a day espoused to the uh, a Holy Ghost. And it is a, a day espoused to the Most Holy Trinity. And we are finding out that um, it is more than coming to the uh, church on Sunday. It goes beyond coming to the church on Sunday. Never before in the in any SDA hymnal was there an entire section of hymns dedicated to the Trinity. This hymnal has at least 12 such a hymns which designate it as acceptable to Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church, and the World Council of Churches. All 12 will be mentioned, but we'll, uh, we will mention uh, nine of them here. Hymn number 73, Holy, Holy, Holy. This hymn was originally written in 1826 by Reginald Harbour. In its original form, it was a Trinitarian song which read at the end of the first and fourth standard as follows, God in three persons and blessed Trinity. This song was put into the into the 1909 and 1941 Seventh Day Adventist hymnal. But the Trinity part was changed to God over 
all who rule satanity and perfect in power in love and purity so our pioneers recognized that what was written in the original song was not true god in three persons blessed trinity this song was purposely changed into an Trinitarian song by seventh day adventists reflecting their views on the trinity at the time of the change in the new 1885 1985 adventist hymnal this song was changed back to its original, reflecting the new view of the Adventist Church at this time. Unless there is a public repentance, we can only conclude that once it was non Trinitarian, but now has changed into a Trinitarian Church. Hymn 47, God who made the earth and heaven. In this hymn, SDS sing, Blessed 3 in 1. Hymn number 71, Come thou almighty king. Again, the wording of this hymn was changed in the new hymnal. In this hymn, SDA worshippers are led to worship the Catholic Trinity concept of God. To thee, great one, in three eternal praises be. All hymnal, uh, hymnals did not have this wording. Hymn number 72, Creator of the Stars at, of Night. This hymn written in the 800s in Latin, probably by Catholic during the Dark Ages. Adventists are again led to sing to false gods with these words. To God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Three in one. Hymn 27, Rejoice ye pure in heart. Verses 5 was taken out of the old hymnal and replaced with Praise him who reigns on high, the Lord who we adore, the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost, one God forevermore. Hymn 30, Holy God, we praise your name. Standard 4, three we name, while in essence only one. In the Trinity concept, all three manifestations of God are one substance. Hymn number 116, of the Father's love begotten. This new hymn teaches Adventists that Christ was begotten ere the words began to be, that Jesus is begotten from all eternity and through all eternity is Trinity concept. SDA believed that Jesus had life original and borrowed and arrived. And this issue of eternal generation, uh, that uh, the Father begets the Son eternally, eternal generation, and the, fa the Father and the Son generates the Holy Spirit eternally. These are concepts of a trinity that are hidden in this mystery religion. And so we are seeing what is happening. The church is being changed from within. Hymn number 234, Christ is the world light. This hymn teaches SDA to pray to the Catholic Trinity. Three persons are the same God. Give God the glory, God and none other. Give God the glory, Spirit, Son and Father. Give God the glory. By the way, there is no place we are told to pray to pray or give glory to the Holy Spirit. In hymn number 235, and I have the 1941 hymnal. I have put it in a, a, a database, uh, in a easy to easy worship uh, uh, app, and also in the video sum uh, software, so that uh, we can be able to sing the original 1941 and 1909 hymnal in its purity, rather than adopting this new hymnal. In hymn number 235, uh, this was a Latin hymn of the 7th century. It was in the old SDA hymnal, but the hymnal committee decided to replace the old 4th standard with a new one that now leads 7th day Adventists to worship the Catholic Trinity concept of God. Praise and honor to the Father, praise and honor to the Son, praise and honor to the Spirit, ever three and ever one. The oneness meant is a physical oneness for in the Trinity, all are composed of the same identical substance, and we have seen that uh, in the above hymn, we are told about the one substance of God. Scripture reading number 0709, Trinity from Ephesians 1, 2, and 4. This scripture teaches about the Godhead, but the title teaches at Anvils to call God by the Catholic term Trinity. The inclusion of this Trinitarian song makes every hymn to God in the book direct to the Trinity. Seventh-day Adventists believe in the Godhead. God family composed of three distinct eternal beings, not a three in one concept. Spirit of prophecy called the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the heavenly trio. And so, uh, what we are taught about the heavenly trio is not what we are taught about these three distinct beings that the Seventh day Adventists wants the people to believe. Altered hymn number 27, 71, 73, and 235 are already mentioned and so we go to 402 there's a major catholic error in this hymn as verse to uphold the blasphemous doctrine of transubstantiation in the eucharist his broken body in our, our state is here in this memorial bread 
This is a false Catholic doctrine that the substance of the bread and wine are changed into the actual flesh and blood of Jesus Christ in the Eucharist, even though the external appearance remains the same. We as Protestants believe that the communion bread and unfermented grape juice are symbols of Christ's uh, uh, flesh and blood. And so, uh, we will be very naive if we do not believe that there are those within our church, obviously in positions of influence, who are working deceptively to change the very foundation of our faith. We, we are told that our religion will be changed. The, the pillars which we have known as truth will be counted as error. Since 1985, the church officially has a hymnal that Catholics will approve of and from which Adventists worship the God of the beast system. Who will you worship? Trinity or the true God? And uh, talking about this system, they say shooting the poor is like shooting God. And for the necessity of salvation, every creature must be subject to the Roman pontiff. The Pope is not only the representative of Jesus Christ, he is Jesus Christ himself. The Pope cannot make a mistake. Pope Innocent described himself as the bodily presence of Christ. Every human being must do as the Pope tells him. We hold upon this earth the place of God Almighty. What is the Lord calling us to do? What is our work, brothers and sisters, then? The beast, his mark, and his image. In the book Testimonies to Ministers and Gospel Workers, page 118, we are told in the very time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. He has called them to expose the wickedness of the man of sin who has made the Sunday law a distinctive power, who has thought to change times and laws and to oppress the people of God who stand firmly to honor him by keeping the only true Sabbath, the Sabbath of creation, as holy unto the Lord. The Roman church now presents a fair front to the world covering with apologies her record of horrible cruelties. She has clothed herself in Christ-like garments, but she is unchanged. Every principle of the papacy that existed in the past ages exists today. The doctrines devised in the darkest ages are still held, and you have seen those doctrines, and they are what makes up Sunday worship. Let none deceive themselves. The papacy that Protestants are now so ready to honor is the same that ruled the world in the days of the Reformation when men of God stood up at the peril of their life to expose her iniquity. She possesses the same pride and arrogance, assumption that loaded it over kings and princes and claimed the prerogatives of God. Her spirit is no less cruel and despotic now than when she crushed out humanity, human liberty and slew the sense of the Most High. The purpose is just what prophecy declared that she will be the apostate, apostate of the latter time. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and 4. The Roman church now presents a fair front to the world, covering with apologies her record of horrible cruelties. She has clothed herself in Christ-like garment, but she is unchanged. It is part of her policy to assume the character which will be will best accomplish her purpose. But beneath the variable appearance of the chameleon, she conceals the invariable one venom of the serpent. And so, we have a real issue before us. And the third angel's message will increase or increases in importance as we near the close of this earth history. God has presented to me the dangers that are threatening those who have been given the sacred work of proclaiming the third angel's message. They are to remember that this message is of the uttermost consequence to the whole world. They need to search the scriptures diligently that they may learn how to save, to guard against the mystery of iniquity. All these mysteries is involved in Sunday sacredness and the mark of the beast. 
the servants of God need to guard against them, which plays so large a part in the closing scenes of earth history. There will be more and still more external parade by worldly powers under different symbols, and we have seen them. God presented to John the wicked character and seductive in front of those who have been distinguished for their persecution of his people. The 18th chapter of Revelation speaks of mystic Babylon. We have seen this mysticism fallen from her high estate to become a persecuting power. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus are the object of the wrath of this power. So, we are nearing the close of this earth history. Satan is making desperate effort to make himself God, to speak and act like God, to appear as one who has a right to control the conscience of people. He strives with all his power to place a human institution in the position of God's holy rest day. Under the jurisdiction of the man of sin, men have exalted a false standard in complete opposition to God's enactment. Each Sabbath institution bears the name of its author an invisible mark showing the authority of each. And we have seen what makes the authority of sand and what constitutes it. The first day of the week has not one particle of sanctity. It is the production of the man of sin who strives in this way to counteract or counterwork God's purposes. God has designated the seventh day as his Sabbath. Thus the distinction is drawn between the loyal and disloyal, whom you worship, when to worship, and how you worship. Those who desire to have the seal of God in their foreheads must keep the Sabbath of the fourth commandment, not only in the day, but in the manner of worship. Thus they are distinguished from the disloyal who have accepted a man-made institution in place of the true Sabbath. The observant of God's rest day is a mark of distinction between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. And I'll, in 9b, I'll be going into details of this um, seal of God in opposition with the mark of the beast, which we have just looked at. Uh, God's, God's denominated people, who are these? God's denominated people, those who on this earth have witnessed to their loyalty, who are they? Those who have kept the commandments of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. Those who have owned the crucified one as their savior. The sign of obedience is the observance of the Sabbath of the fourth commandment. If men keep the fourth commandment, they will keep all the rest. I'll say this. In Revelation chapter 14, John beholds another scene. He sees a people whose fidelity and loyalty to the laws of God's kingdom grow with the emergency. The contempt placed upon the law of God only makes them reveal more decidedly their love for the law. It increases with the contempt that is placed on it. And so, lastly, the light we have received upon the third angel's message is the true light. The mark of the beast is exactly what it has been proclaimed to be. Not all in regard to this matter is yet understood, but now we are just getting some glimpses of it. Nor will it be understood until the unrolling of the scroll. When the Sunday law goes into effect, brothers and sisters, you will see things you have never seen. But the Lord is just giving glimpses here and there so that we may understand what is coming. So a more solemn work is to be accomplished in our world. The Lord's command to his servant is cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression, the house of Jacob, their sins. Isaiah 58, paragraph 1. Ending. There is not to be no change in the general features of our work. It is to stand as clear and distinct as prophecy has made it. We are to enter into no confederacy with the world, be it in our hymns, be it in our manner of worship, be it in anything. We are to enter into no confederacy with the world, supposing that by so doing we could accomplish more. If any stand in the way to hinder the advancement of the work in the lines that God has appointed, they will displease God. And brothers and sisters, many of us, corporal church has disappointed God has displeased him. No line of truth that has made the seventh day Adventist people what they are is to be weakened. We have seen how they have weakened us in the hymnal, in the man of worship uh, celebration, and uh, this uh, uh, 
mimicking of other religions. We have the all landmarks of truth, experience, and duty, and we are to stand firmly in the defense of our principles in full view of the world. Brothers and sisters, there's, there's more to speak about this, but I commit you to the love of Jesus Christ, which constrains us to do what we do, to be able to guide you in all the steps that you take towards the right way. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this information. Now, theoretical information will never save anyone, but we need a practical experience. And what has been lacking is us yielding unto the Lord. Take our hearts and seal it for thy courts above in heaven, and help us to do that which in human power we cannot do ourselves. But Lord, I thank you because divinity combined with humanity becomes omnipotence. And so thank you for this assurance in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.